Okay, everybody, welcome back to the dining room for another night of physics. Tonight, we are going to talk about EMF and internal resistance. Let's get this up for the full screen. Okay, so we've seen this before. This is a, a simple circuit, and how a simple si circuit works is you have <laughs> you have your, your battery, right, which is your, your uh, power in, and you have a load or a resistor here, which is your potential difference drop. So potential difference in, potential difference out. An ammeter measures current. That ammeter is hooked up in series with the resistor so it can measure the current. And here we have a voltmeter that measures the potential drop across the resistor. So remember the voltmeter is hooked up in parallel so it can measure the difference in energy per charge at two different points, these two different points being across the resistor. Very nice, very basic, very simple. The idea being that if 10 volts comes in from the battery, there's a 10 volt drop in the resistor. And the wires and the ammeter and the battery all have zero resistance. And in a perfect, beautiful world, it works. Unfortunately, the world's not so perfect. Um, tonight we're talking about internal resistance. And internal resistance is occurs um, when your, your battery basically absorbs some of the energy from the current flow. Okay, so what we have here, this and this are essentially the same circuit, missing, a, missing an ammeter and voltmeter. Okay, this has a battery and it has a resistor. This also has a battery, points A and B are the terminals of the battery, and a resistor and a current that flows through it. And how we, I guess, illustrate internal resistance is we put a little tiny resistor, a little tiny box inside the battery. So the battery essentially, as, as we think of it, has two parts. It has this, which is called the EMF, and that's what gives the potential to the circuit, right? That's what gives the energy per charge. And also in a battery, we have a very small resistor re represented here, which is the internal resistance. And MacBooks here are, are famous for that. Sometimes you pick up a MacBook and you think, wow, it's, it's really hot. And, uh, and what's going on is essentially the battery is, is heating up. Um, it's absorbing energy as, as the computer runs. Okay? And so tonight what I want to do is I want to illustrate, one, how we find the total, the EMF, which is the total work per charge available, and also how we find the internal resistance of a battery. So let's see if we can do those two things. Okay. Maybe. There we go. Okay. Two diagrams here. This first diagram on the left, this is what, what you would see if you were setting up uh, an experiment to measure EMF and internal resistance. What you would have is you would have a battery with a voltmeter hooked up on either side of it. Okay, and then coming out of that battery, you'd have a wire that runs through an ammeter. And then through this, this is called a variable resistor. It's a it's a resistor that that can change the amount of resistance by, by moving a dial. And, and in a class in the future, I'll show you how it does that. But for now, let's just understand that it's a resistor that you can actually physically change the amount of resistance and therefore the amount of current that goes through it. So you have your, your, your positive and negative. The current goes out the positive uh, through the ammeter. The current's measured. And then through this variable resistor, which can go from zero resistance up to infinite resistance, which is just an open switch. And then back through and around and in. And the voltmeter measures the difference in potential at both sides of the battery. Okay? So what you have then is, is EMF, which is the total energy per charge available for the entire uh, circuit, the entire complete circle, equals the terminal potential difference plus the potential difference across the battery, okay? Remember that energy is conserved, and therefore energy per charge is conserved. So what you'll have is, is the EMF is the total voltage that's, that's created by this power source equal, equals the voltage from the circuit, right? That's the potential drop between the two batteries, and plus the potential drop in the battery itself. So this is what's available for your iPod, and this is energy absorbed by the battery. Okay, so you're losing energy in two spots. You lose it here with the variable resistor, and you lose it here in the battery itself. We're going to mess with this equation a little bit. We're going to say that EMF equals voltage from the circuit. That's what we measure as V, 
plus, okay, and then the voltage drop across the battery, we're going to we're going to use Ohm's law and say that V equals I times R. So the voltage across the battery equals I, the current through the battery, times R, which is the internal resistance of the battery. And you can see that here. Here's what we have is here's a battery with an EMF and an internal resistor. And you can imagine any current that goes through that internal resistor will have a voltage drop. Okay? And so in our experiment, what we do is we record values of potential difference on either end of the battery. We hook up our voltmeter on either side of the battery, just like the diagram on the left shows you. Okay? And then we take our variable resistor, and I need a pen, which of course I don't have now. Let's see. Let's take a, a little arrow, and we'll put it across here. All right, there we go. There's our variable resistor. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the resistance across this. Okay, we'll start, we'll start at, at, at infinite resistance. We'll just open it right up, and that will shut the current off, and then we'll, we'll manipulate it from there. So by changing this resistance, we're going to change the current that goes around this simple circuit. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to record the potential drop across the battery as we increase and decrease the current with this resistor. Right, I'll say that again. We're going to increase and decrease the current across this resistor. So as the resistor goes up here, the, the amount of resistance goes up, this current's going to go down, and that will decrease the amount of current that flows through here. All right, and then as we lower this resistance, we make it smaller, this current is going to go up, and that will increase the amount of current that flows through the battery. And so really what happens is if you get too small a resistance, you get too much current and your battery gets hot. It's what's known as a short circuit. And they're dangerous. Okay? Anyhow, let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to take this diagram, the one on your right, that measures the potential difference across a battery. All right, and I'm going to, I'm going to record values for V, potential difference across the battery at, at varying currents, A. So I'm recording A and I'm recording V. And I'm going to skip ahead to the, the outcome. Here we go. All right. So this, this is what we got. We, we took different voltages here and here on either side of the battery for varying currents. And i got to make this an internal resistor or a variable resistor again. There we go. Okay. So we vary this resistance and we change the current. So the first current I want to have, I want to have a, an infinite resistance. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to make this resistance so high that it actually opens the switch. It's like a, a light switch. light goes off because you break the circuit. So if you do that, zero current goes through here. There's no current allowed to go through this amps, and there therefore is no current going through the battery. If there's no current going through the battery, then I times R... Well, maybe I'll put that equation in just so you can see it again. EMF equals V plus capital I, lower R. Okay. All right. So if I open this switch, then the current that goes through this ammeter and also the current that goes through this battery equals zero. So this term right here is zero. And so at that, if there's zero current, then the voltage that you record between here and here, if there's no potential drop from the internal resistance, the voltage drop here and here equals the EMF. And that's what you get at your y-intercept right here. If you have zero current going through the circuit, then the, the voltage that you read on opposite ends of the, of the terminal equals your EMF. Okay? And that happens when the switch is open on the variable resistor, and it's essentially an infinite resistance. So now we close the switch. The current can go through, but it's still a really, really high resistance. Okay, this is a really big resistor with a really big potential drop, and so therefore there's a very small amount of current gets through this. And that small amount of current goes around the circuit, and it comes through, and that small amount of current hits this resistor in the battery, the internal resistance, and it goes through. But remember, the I is very small, and so the I times R is also very small. And so you get a very small potential drop here. 
And so if you have a really high resistor, the EMF is very close to the voltage drop or the potential difference across the board. Okay. I make this resistance smaller and more and more electrons flow through and the current gets bigger and bigger so they start going through more and more and more so I gets bigger and bigger and bigger as this resistance gets smaller and as I gets bigger this IR also gets bigger. EMF is a set number you can't create energy so this is a constant number as this resistor gets smaller and smaller the potential drop across the internal resistance gets bigger and bigger and that's what happens when your battery gets hot that's not what you want you don't want to use energy to make your battery hotter but what's happening is this as you decrease the resistance the current gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and the voltage drop across this gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller okay and the reason it gets smaller and smaller is because now more and more energy is being lost inside the battery, okay? Eventually, if you have a zero resistance here, then what's going to happen is all the EMF is going to be dropped in, in, uh, inside this, this resistance, and you won't get any potential difference between here and here. And that's what you see down here at this line, okay? So I'm not sure how I'm doing for time. I want to quickly wrap this up, okay? What you do with this equation, then you see this is a negative sloping line that, gra that graphs V on the y-axis and I on the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change this. I might change the font to make it a little smaller. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to manipulate this equation with a little bit of algebra. Okay, and I'm going to take this, this IR and move it to the other side. So I have EMF minus IR equals V. Or if I flip that around, V equals EMF minus IR. So now what I have is the equation of a, of a negative line. This V is your, is your y-axis. That's your y-value. Okay. Negative IR, this is your, your slope times your x. Remember, x is i is the current, and your slope is going to be negative r. So the slope of this line is a negative slope, so it, it's, it's negative return, internal resistance. So this slope, which is a negative slope, is negative r. It's the, it's the value of the negative internal resistance. And then the y-intercept, emf, is, and the y-intercept is, is your, your work per charge. I hope that clears some things up a bit. It was, it was fast. I know it was fast. Um, hopefully not too fast. But, uh, I mean, if, if you want, come in, ask some questions. And, uh, yeah, hopefully this maybe clears a few things up. Good luck, and we'll see you tomorrow.